In this video I will show you how you can check the constraint qualification and why we check the constraint qualification. Let's assume you have a standard maximization problem of the following form. We maximize u of c1 and c2, so respect to c1 and c2, such that p1 c1 plus p2 c2 is equal less than or equal to some value k. Okay, so this looks pretty much like a consumer problem, so you have a utility function that you maximize with respect to two consumption goods, and you have a budget constraint, you have a price attached to good one and a price attached to good two, and you have some income k. In addition, we have two more constraints, and these are that c1 is greater or equal to zero, and c2 is greater or equal to zero. because we cannot consume any negative amounts of goods. Okay, so we have this standard maximization problem and we now want to check the constraint qualification. Well, the constraint qualification will check if the gradient of the constraints, of the binding constraints, has the required rank. And this rank is the minimum of the number of variables or the number of constraints. So for example, we have three constraints here and two variables. If all three constraints are binding, we have still only two variables, so our gradient needs to have at least rank two. If we have only one binding constraint, so one of these three is binding, we still have two variables, but the minimum of the two is one, so our constraint qualification needs to have rank one so that our optimal condition will lead to the correct maximum. Now before we can apply uh, and test this constraint qualification, we need to bring these constraints in the right format. And the right format is something is less than or equal to zero. So let's quickly transform them. So the first one becomes P1 C1 plus P2 C2 minus K is less than or equal to zero. The second one is minus C1 is less than or equal to zero. And the third one minus C2 is less than or equal to zero. And we have our three constraints in the correct format. Let's call these constraints together G. And so we can write down the gradient of this G. So the gradient of G will be equal to a matrix, and we take the derivative with respect to the variables that we maximize. So it will be C1 and C2. Let's take the first one here. The derivative of this with respect to, or mainly the left-hand side of this, with respect to C1 will just be P1. With respect to C2 will be P2. This one does not have C2, so it will be zero here. And with respect to C1, it will just be minus one, and the reverse for this one down here. And we have now our gradient, which needs to have the required rank if we look at the binding constraints. Okay, we now have several cases, right? We could have all are binding, two of them are binding, or only one of them is binding. Let's start with the case that three constraints are binding. If all three constraints are binding, that means C1 is equal to zero, C2 is equal to zero, that means the left-hand side here is zero, and K is equal to zero. Well, if we have three binding constraints but still two variables, that means the gradient needs to have rank two. If we look at this gradient, let's forget about the first row, we see that this has rank one, this has rank one, because there are no zeros here, so this will always be satisfied. No matter how you arrange it, these two can span R2 already, so we have full rank. Now, this was one case, the easiest case. Let's look each individual equation being binding alone. So if the first one is binding, then we will have only this top row 
and this top row needs to have at least rank 1 because we have one binding constraint. Well, if both are 0, this does not have full rank. So we need to have that either P1 or P2 or both are not equal to 0. So if only one is binding, then we have P1 or P2 cannot be equal to 0. If we look at the second one, then we have this middle part. There is no problem there because we always have a non-zero value here, so this will always have at least rank 1, so that's always fine. Similarly for the last one, if only the last one is binding, we only have this bottom row, and this bottom row will always have rank 1, so no problem. So as we've just seen, okay, if all are binding, or one of the bottom two is binding, we're fine. If the top one is the only one binding, we have a constraint, we have a restriction here that now both P1 and P2 can be equal to zero. How about if two are binding, right? We did the case for three binding and one binding, but it could also be that two are binding. Let's turn out this one, this two, and this three, and so we can go through several cases. The first one, one and two. Okay, so we assume one and two are binding. So the third one is irrelevant, but these two are both binding. Then we need to look at a top part of this gradient matrix, and we find that um, the top row is a multiple of this row if P2 is zero. If P2 is not zero, we have full rank because here's a zero, so if that's not zero, then they span together R2. So we get a restriction here that P2 cannot be equal to zero. If we have one and three, then we don't have this middle row, then we have this top row and this bottom row, and we have very similar restriction. If P1 is equal to zero, then these two rows are just multiples of each other and this matrix does not have full rank so we require that P1 is not equal to zero. And lastly we have two and three so we don't have the top row but we have the bottom two rows and this has full rank because um, this one is for C1 and this one for C2, it's not zero, so we have full rank, so that's always satisfying. If we sum up, the constraint qualification holds if neither P1 nor P2 is equal to zero, and these are the only restrictions we need for our constraint qualification to hold. Now what happens if it does not hold? Well, if the constraint qualification does not hold, or for example, P1 is equal to zero, then we would need to check these points separately. Might be restrictions, and we need to check these separately. Let me give you a nice example for this. So let's take a different function where we have to check the constraint qualification and it becomes problematic. Okay, let's take a one variable case that's the simplest. Let's say we want to maximize x. So linear function, very simple, such that x to the power of 3 plus 2x squared is less than or equal to 0. Conveniently, I already brought it in the correct form to make our life much easier. Okay, we have this problem, maximize x such that x to the power of 3 plus 2x squared is less than or equal to 0. Let's set up the constraint qualification. Here, it's only one variable, so we have g prime, if we call this constraint again g, and this will be equal to 3x squared plus 4x. And we need to have full rank, so this expression cannot be equal to 0. Let me rewrite it quickly. 
we get x times 3x plus 4. And now we can immediately see this expression is 0 if x equals 0 or if x is equal to minus 4 over 3. So if x is equal to 0 or x is equal to minus 4 thirds, the constraint qualification does not hold. Okay, let's ignore this for the moment and let's just try to maximize this problem. If we set up the Lagrangian, then we get x minus lambda x to the power of 3 plus 2x squared. That's our Lagrangian. And now we can take our first order condition and we get 1 minus lambda um, 3x squared plus 4x equals 0. So the optimal point needs to satisfy this first order condition. Let's take another step back and look at this maximization problem because it's a really easy one. If we just want to maximize x, that means x should be as high as possible such that this constraint is still satisfied. Well, x to the power of 3 is always positive if x is positive. 2x squared is always positive. It can reach 0, but it can never go below 0. That means this expression can only be negative if x is negative. So the highest possible value x can take to still satisfy this constraint is if x is equal to 0. So we have x equals 0 as our solution. But we just saw that the constraint qualification does not hold if x equals 0. So let's see what problem this arises here if we um, try to optimize. Well, if we know x is our solution, it needs to satisfy this condition. Well, if x is equal to 0, this term here is 0. Lambda is a constant, so the whole thing here is 0. 1 minus 0 can never be 0. So because of that, our optimal solution does not satisfy this first order condition. And so if we go over the first order condition and try to solve it, we will never get x equals 0 here. And that's why we need to check the constraint qualification. So we could have any of the three cases that this condition works, x is equal to 0, or x is equal to minus 4 thirds. Any of those could be a solution. Now we checked, and this is actually the solution, which means because the constraint qualification does not hold at this point, our first order condition will not be satisfied at the optimal point. Thank you for watching.